expansion. Watch fresh episodes of Community Forum on Sundays by 9.30 p.m. only on TVC News. Good morning, Marina Station and all the passengers. Efficient. It's comfortable. This development will go a long way in reducing congestion and emission. Nigerians woke up to the news that the pump price for petrol had gone up on Tuesday. Now, this compounded um, with the persistent queues that have been present around the country for the past few weeks. This is Standpoint. I am Precious Amayu. Now, also on Tuesday, CEO of Dangote Group, Aliko Dangote, released official samples of petrol from his refinery, assuring that a local sale of the fuel will help stabilize the Naira by helping to correct distortions in the value of the local currency and as compared with the dollar. Describing the developments as historic, Dangote said the refinery located in Lagos will assist in knowing the true consumption of petrol in Nigeria since every loaded truck can be tracked. Meanwhile, oil marketers have yet to commence the loading of petrol, despite assurances by the federal government that the commodity will be available by the weekend. As a result, petrol queues in major cities persisted on Friday, Despite the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources Oil, Heineken Lokmobiri, earlier promising that the product would be massively available before the weekend. Uh, you know, PMS can actually be in the market by, uh, today is what, Tuesday? By, when, by, when is it? by Thursday, let us, our product can be in the market. I think there will not be any disruption because the president, not only that he brought the uh, whole idea, he took it to the Federal Executive Council. It was approved, uh, you know, at the Federal Executive Council. And I think whoever wants to play with the instructions of the president, uh, he will pay a big price. And also to thank Mr. President and his government for assisting us to make sure that we achieve this, uh, you know, dream. This is a very monumental, uh, you know, uh, dream, you know, for us that we've been able to achieve something like this, which Nigeria has not really uh, achieved producing uh, gasoline in the last uh, 28 years. Mm -hmm. So I think it's good, at least during his administration, this has been, you know, achieved. And also to thank him for making sure that he brought out this Naira, Naira transaction, of which will help to stabilize our currency, to bring uh, growth and prosperity to our country. Well, let's um, look at the oil sector, all of the controversies and the, the, the unavailability of fuel, the Dangote refinery, just a lot of issues. And we have um, a full house. We have Professor of Energy Transitions, Extractives and Governance Law, Professor Dayo Ayuade. He joins us in the studio. We also have um, a financial analyst, Mukta Mohammed, also joining us in the studio. Now, joining us via Zoom from the U.S. is the National President, Petroleum Products Retail Outlet Owners Association of Nigeria, Dr. Billy Gillis Harry. Um, he's joining us also from Houston. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us um, this afternoon. A lot to talk about, I doubt. I mean, this is one of the few times on this show that I would say I don't have enough time because um, there is a lot to talk about when it comes to the oil sector. But I want to begin with both of you in the studio. Um, Professor Ayadi, I mean, you've been following the, the challenge, the whole um, narrative in the past one month, if not even more. Starting from whether we have enough oil, uh, enough fuel in the country, and NPC saying, no, we have enough to last us for as much as 30 months. And then the issue of what NNPC was owing, and NNPC denying and coming back to, to you know, say, look, we're actually owing. I mean, just a lot. Dangote refinery, the price. I mean, did you, when you put all of this together, and when you see where we are now, are you surprised or were you expecting that this is what, where all of this was going to get to? Well, I'm not completely shocked. Um, the NNPC. Uh, is now the NNPC limited, of course, under the oh. Petroleum Industry Act of 2021. But has it actually changed its colors? Has it actually changed into a private company? A company that's um, interested in being commercial, profit-driven, transparent, and accountable to Nigerians? I would have slight doubts 
uh, because we've Even had... Even it released um, a report recently stating all of his earnings are well of his, his money. Profits. Yes, mm. it's, it's still his profits, isn't it? Mm. But at the same time, they're said to be owing six billion US dollars. That's not a joke. Um, if, I, if, I, if I'm a company and I say I have earned three billion dollars in profit, and at the same time I'm owing six billion dollars, am I, do I have a profit of three billion dollars? These are questions that I think we need to ask. I think the, 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 the problem is that uh, NNP, NNPC has been used to its opaque way of doing business and transactions, uh, even to admit it owes $6 billion. I've not actually seen any report saying it, it owes $6 billion. It says I, we owe some money, but they never actually said the exact amount of money they owe. Yes, it's true that businesses uh, you know, uh, come and go, they, are flowing, they, they have relationships with their suppliers, but you should have a, a guesstimate, surely what you owe. Oh. All right. So let me come to you, uh, because in, in a few moments, I'll focus solely on Dr. Billy uh, Gillis-Hara, because I know that he has to leave at some point. But let, let me also ask you, are you surprised um, by where we are now? Well, uh, I'm surprised, uh, because again, when, you, uh, when, you come, when they come out with fact and you come out with counterfact, today the people are saying, look, you are paying subsidy. You came out and said, no, I'm not paying subsidy. Then you come out again and say, I'm making profits. Tomorrow you come back and say, oh, I'm not making profits. So I'm surprised. But I think what has happened is that NNPC have run out of lies. They have to come out and say the truth. Just like they have been telling us since Portaco Refinery was supposed to start in December. Well, the last time the, the CEO, Mark Yari, said, this time I'm saying the truth. <laughs> it, it will start. So... I think they ran out of like the old issues when we had this crisis, like you say, they said they have enough for 30 days. The time they came and said, oh, there is an issue of flooding, transportation, weather, technical activity in terms of loading. They, were never, they never came out to say the truth. So the first time they are saying the truth, they are telling us, oh, we are owing. Oh, we are paying something. Remember this truth started coming out when they, they realized that they cannot continue to remit money to the Federation account. They went to Mr. Francis and said, look, we cannot because we are owing. And like he said, they never, see, so they, even the NNPC, I am telling you, listening to one of them on your program on TV, he said, we never gave a figure of how much we are owing. It's just numbers being banished around by pressmen. They were saying it. And like he said, corporate governance. If you ask a company, how much are you owing? By the tip. You should be able to say that's corporate governance. This is a company that is supposed to have, have an audited report. By now, we should have had first quarter, second quarter. We should be preparing, we should be preparing right. for third quarter. All right. Let me put you on hold. Um, I, like I said, uh, Dr. Gelisari was, will, will be out in a moment. So let me just focus my next line of questions to him because he's also in the industry. This is his industry. Dr. Gelisari, um, as the national president of Petrowana, I'm sure that you are, you'll be able to tell us um, give us update as to where we are now. There was a promise that by this weekend we will see the rollout of petrol across the country. Um, are we in the clear now? Well, um, we're, we're not yet in the clear. The rolling out those trucks. Uh, very tirelessly to ensure that we have products that have been on in the last three weeks. Um, hopefully, we should get we hear some good news. Today is uh, Saturday. This is about two o'clock in the afternoon. So um, we are we are still waiting. You know, we have been assured that uh, our products will roll out, and we are looking forward to lifting them. We are ready to take them to our various retail outlets. The the retailers have haven't gotten the fuel yet. What what exactly do you mean when you say we are not in the clear? Well, well, what I mean by that is uh, um, we have we have been assured that by weekend there should be petroleum product rolling out. So weekend started from Friday. So Friday today is Saturday. Um, there is still one more day in the weekend to go Sunday. So we just hope that um, uh, there will be a twenty-four hour you know work schedule that's put in place to ensure that we have petroleum products. But right now, as I speak to you, we are yet to have any of those indications that uh, we are going to load today. So help us... But we are ready. Our tankers are there. Yes. All right, so help us speak to the price hike we saw 
I mean, the cause of the week, because I think Nigerians are still struggling to understand what exactly happened when, you know, just barely 24 hours after Dangote said, look, they're, they're going to start ruling out fuel. The very next day, what we heard was, or what we saw was a jump in price without any announcement. It, it, it was sudden, and people are still trying to make sense. And that's the price now. People are still trying to make sense of what exactly that means and why that happened. Well, um, I, I really cannot uh, tell what happens in the uh, boardroom or administrative uh, processes of NNPC, but um, we have always requested that informations and actions like this should be taken one at a time and information given um, prior to the fact. But this took everybody unawares because we're all scrambling for clarification, information, several uh, meetings, different calls, and uh, it's uh, just only a few days ago, few just actually a day ago or so, when we got a clarification from NNPC to tell us that we should go and uh, make additional payments. So of course, obviously, if we're going to make additional payments, that will impact the price. But as to why uh, most of the stations, especially the NNPC brand, uh, did those uh, price jumps <laughs> at the time they did, uh, I can tell. Okay, I, I will get back to the price in just a moment. But when you said NNPC have, have, had asked you to make um, additional payments some days ago, I want to also get what that means. Oh, well, what that means is that uh, um, we used to buy about uh, 45,000 liters for about 25, 26 million naira. Now that same product is going to be coughing out about 30. Nine million to pay for the same product. So the product you are buying now is still import, is still imported, not not the one from the Dangote refinery. I, I just want us to be clear on that. Well, we we don't we don't we there's no way we can tell because we are not importing, and NNPC is the sole importer, and now also turned the sole uptaker from a Dangote refinery, which for us is a little bit of a surprise because uh, some of us. Um, retail outlet owners have already registered and have our off-taker agreements. So they have been off-taker approvals. So basically, um, we should have expected, we should also be able to take products directly from either Dangote or from the NMPC refinery. But policy changes, uh, federal government decisions and uh, waiting in, uh, decisions have been made that NMPC will be made a sole off-taker for now. And we are told they're going to have about 25 million liters uh, rolling out shortly. Uh, we, we are waiting for that to happen. And like always, our tankers are ready, our retail outlets are ready to expand the distribution as fast as possible. We know that um, NNPC has as much as 20% stake in, in, in uh, Dangote Refiner. Even though for now it's just 7%, um, it, it is um, using. But that means that it has decision making, you know, uh, stand or position in that in that refinery. But the fact that it is the sole optica, and then the sole price controller, and what is the implication of that for um, the supply, and then for for those of you who are retailers? Oh well, uh, NMPC has uh, dutifully um, given us petroleum products. They are our senior partners in this business. Uh, they've dutifully done that for several you know, years. Uh, so there is no reason for us uh, to think that they will not um, deliver you know, mandates at this time because we have what is called the bulk purchase agreement with NMPC and a well true PPMC, which is now defunct. Uh, but they are obligated to give us petroleum products. And of course, even the PIA has given clear uh, delineations as to how that would happen. So, um, but the concerns we have is that we should have an open access. We should have an open access to all refineries, not just Dangote. We should have access to Potakot, we should have access to Wari, and whenever these refineries come on stream, we should also be able to buy directly from them. And that's why we took time to apply for our off-taker off approvals, which we duly uh, qualified for after due process. So um, for us to now uh, get uh, only the news that our NMPC is going to be the only sole off taker is a concern for us. Whereas we are running away from the monopoly of uh, uh, one refinery 
uh, we, sh we should try to liberalize as much as possible the distribution channels. Uh, we have uh, DAPMAN that have, you know, a plethora of uh, 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 storage facilities across the country, especially in Port Harcourt, Wari, uh, Calabar, uh, and uh, they, are, they are there to be able to receive products by marine. And so it's easy for us to get products from every part of the country. We have MEMAN that also have such facilities. Petron members also have such facilities. We have IPMAN members that also have such facilities. So I think we should get to the point where we should be able to gain access and be able to see how competition can drive down price mm. and ensure that there's product availability all the time. And because you, because you mentioned price, because people are wondering, are we ever going to get to the point where you know, the price goes down? Or are we at the point where you know, it just continues to go up? What, what, what do you predict? Because that's your industry. What do you think, what's gonna happen especially with pricing in the coming days, in the coming months? Well, my candid advice uh, to everybody uh, is that we shouldn't do any armchair price prediction uh, by any means, because we have the PIA that's clearly delineated how uh, pricing should be. There are templates and processes in section 205, 207, 208, 168, oh, sorry, 169, uh, the, the PIA is very clear as to how the president should be. And we have the regulatory authorities that supervise that uh, with clear conditions as to how uh, uh, the, uh, the sales you know, should be done and how the profit should be done in connection with also the Fair, uh, fair, uh, fair Competition Council. So there is so much that's already in place and all that I think we need to do as Nigerians is start obeying the law, follow through with the law. And if one practice of what we have put as a policy is not working, we should be able to have the guts to, to, to change them. For crying out loud, we have just only this country and we don't have another. Regardless of what kind of passport any one of us carry, we, we must know that we have only Nigeria as our country. And we must all work to salvage this country. And the only way we have to do it is just to follow rules. Mm. Um, so I do not think that it will be fair for anybody to, to start to predict what prices will be. I mean, mm. you heard what Dangote said. They say for price. And, and Dr. Uh, Tahari, and, and that's my final question to you, because I know that you have to go. Um, because Dangote also said that he's waiting for NNPC um, to determine the price. Because people are wondering, look, are we still... Uh, a deregulated, you know, oil sector, you know, that, that is determined by market forces, or now we're doing price fixing? Uh, no, we are not doing, there's no price fixing. Like I've just uh, referred you to the PIA sections 205, 207, 208, 9. Um, the, the provisions are very clear as to how pricing should be done and uh, the, uh, the conditions under which organizations like us should also function and make sure that uh, the country does not bleed in any way. Uh, yes, um, I am an advocate of uh, the removal of subsidy. I'm an advocate of market prices determining the price of PMS because PMS is just one, one item in all that we need to grow our economy. Uh, but we need uh, to really, really um, work the process of how Nigeria should have a fair deal. And that's also why we push as much as possible our members to start to embrace the CNG project. We have over 700 stations that uh, have been pre-qualified by us and we are, we are yet even to be discussed with, you know, uh, about what can be done. And these are things that grassroots inputs, you know, should have made us today to, you know, to, to, to step out in in some different ways. Because it's not easy to set up those stations. We need government to intervene. We need funds. We need some kind of guarantees also for our technical partners to come in and install all those facilities across the country. I don't think we should leave that for only one committee you know, to, to do. Uh, the pricing will come out, but I think it will be a fair pricing. Because every one of us, is, as, as I speak to you now, there's a major a meeting going on across the stakeholders, and uh, uh, pricing is one of the issues. 
um, uh, NMDPRA itself uh, will not, has not told us that they're going to cap prices. But at the end of the day, every uh, input that should guarantee fair pricing, efficient uh, monitoring and supervision by NMDPRA, um, and also holding NMPC accountable to make sure that when product is taken from Dangote, we have access to that and immediately deliver them to all parts of the country. That's what we, as an association, that's what Petron is all about. That's what Ipman is doing. That's what Meman is doing. That's what Dapman is doing. Mm. And within the stakeholders, um, Nupeng is doing a fantastic job. PTD is doing a fantastic job. We're willing to work very collaboratively to make sure that every uh, part of the country is, uh, you know, wet with petroleum products. So once we have it, we we'll supply it. We can only supply, we can only sell what we have. And that's just where we are. Um, interesting conversation with you. Just a lot to unpack. I know that you have to go. Thank you so much for your time. I'm the national president, uh, Petroleum Products and Retail Outlets uh, Owners Association of Nigeria, Dr. Billy Gilisari. Always, always, always a pleasure to have you on. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, um, a lot he said uh, in terms of pricing. He went as far as you know, even telling us how much they were buying, um, as much as 45,000 liters, and now how much you're paying for it. I mean, just a lot. But let me start with, with the issue of he talked about um, NNPC being the sole off taker from um, Dangote Refinery after they have gotten approval, you know, to be off takers as well. I mean, what does what is the implication of that? Well, um, if NNPC is the approved singular monopoly of taker. It means that Dangote refinery can only sell to them. And if you sell to only one customer, it means, of course, competition is dead and buried. Um, the whole so it's a one customer refinery? It cannot be. It cannot be. The way, the way I'm interpreting it is that we're in a bit of an emergency, a bit of a crisis because of the fuel queues and everything. In the short term, let NNPC pick up the, the products and move it out um, into, into the markets. It's going to take about a week, maybe two weeks for, for the products to go around. Don't forget, you have to truck maybe um, all the way to um, Miduguri and all these far parts of Nigeria because we have very poor infrastructure. Our product pipelines are not working very well. Now, if, if, this, if this is the case, it should be a temporary solution because it's actually against the law. The PIA does not anticipate um, a monopoly buyer, and certainly not NNPC. NNPC um, does security of supply for the nation. The, the act gives them that power to be the, the security supplier. But what it does is that it says that they, they charge the government for, for doing that work. So NNPC is paid to do this work, but they cannot be a monopoly supplier because that's against the competitive markets and the deregulation that is central in the PIA. All right, so let me also get your thought on that. Um, being a monopoly buyer, being a one customer re refinery where it's just the end because, you know, for him, it was quite surprising, mean, just from what he was saying, that look, if we've gotten approval, and we're hearing you know, on television that NMPC is going to be the sole off taker, and that in itself has implication, especially for pricing as well, like, like you talked about, your reaction. Well, I think, um from, unless I'm getting it up from the NMPC side and Dangote, that will only happen in September. I mean, for at least in September, NMPC will be the only one to lift for it from Dangote refinery in September. Hmm. Remember, again, the deal between the Naira and uh, Naira, Naira, to Naira, Naira deal also will commence in October 1st, according to them. So there may be in the whole of September, they are rolling it out through the NMPC because up to this moment, NMPC is still the sole importer of petroleum, refined petroleum product into the country. So maybe that's where we are. That's why NMPC is taking, and uh, like he said, in terms of infrastructure, uh, maybe NMPC would do a better job in lifting it to various side parts in Nigeria. But I don't think it's uh, going to be a mono. I have a problem with that also because it's somehow, even if it is one day, it's a monopoly for one day. Uh, but again, remember again that the NMPC also is a stakeholder, a shareholder of Dangote Refinery, whether it's 7% or 
whether it's thirteen percent, but they are the only one that are shareholder now with the legal dangote. So definitely, you want to give it to your shareholder first, so that they can also be able to boost um, whatever investment they've done in the, in in, the, in dangote. So as we speak, um, NFPC has just released. Um, you know, there's a press release from NNPC on X, and they are saying that, um, and it's, the heading there is, NNPC not the sole off-taker. Market open to lower prices from any domestic refinery. I just want to take a part of it where it says, um, the attention of the NNPC Limited has been drawn to a press release by the Muslim Rights Concern, Murik, which claims that the Dangote refinery DRL is being undermined by actions of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, Specifically, Murik um, asserts the recent changes to the pump price of premium motor spirit will prevent the Dangote refinery from offering lower prices, and that NNPC Limited has become the sole optica um, of the product. And they, they, you know, NNPC is trying to set the record straight. And then um, just to take just the first part of that, because it, it did break it down into paragraphs. Number one, it says the pricing of petroleum products from any refinery, including the Dangote refinery, is determined by global market forces. The recent changes in PMS prices have no impact on the DROL or any other domestic refineries' access to the Nigerian market. In fact, if current prices are perceived as high, it presents an ideal opportunity for the refinery to sell its products at lower prices in the Nigerian market. Your, your thoughts on that, on that? I think we have to be very cautious. Um, there's just too much rumor, innuendo. Um, people are not experts in the industry. We have no idea of the industry. Criticizing everybody, alleging crazy conspiracies, um, look, the oil pricing, product pricing is a global issue, okay? So it's, it's a global market. At the moment, we're, we're importing these products into the market, and then we have Aliko Dangote uh, refinery coming up. Are we expecting Aliko Dangote, having borrowed substantial amounts of money in dollars, over 11, 12 billion dollars, sure. is it supposed to now sell as an undervalue to us because he likes us? What about his shareholders? He has to pay his banks. Um, we, we have to be very cautious. Where is that idea coming from, that because it's a local refinery based in the country, there's going to be, the, uh, the, you know, the pump price is going to be lower? Where does that idea come from? The mistake comes from the fact that Nigeria is blessed with crude oil. Why don't we have cheap products? Well, if you look at Libya, for instance, they have the cheapest products in the world, it's something like three cents per liter, meaning that uh, a bottle of water, one liter of water, is actually more expensive than one liter of petroleum. But we are not at that stage. We are in a country where we have the, one of the highest amounts of producing crude oil, something like $40 plus, just to produce a, a barrel. So, so we're already in trouble because of our inefficient, um, opaque, slightly corrupt uh, business environment. The crude oil you're going to use is priced in dollars. Dangote had to buy products from the United States. Sure. So, so he spent a, a huge amount of money. How would you like this entrepreneur to now become uh, a subsidy giver to the entire nation? No, it, it will not work that way. Sure. So we have to be very cautious. I, I think that the fair pricing or sustainable pricing is what we want. Nothing, nothing crazy, something that the market can bear. I also say that the market is the king. When we talk about product, the market is king. If you offer an artificially low price, you'll be hammered by the market. And what will happen? All our neighboring countries, they all benefit from our subsidized uh, products. If Nigeria wants to get it right, we should have roughly equal pricing with Republic of Benin, Ghana, uh, Cameroon, and what have you. All the places where our, our product is disappearing through. Because smuggling is one of our biggest problems. All right. So we'll, we'll, we'll speak more on this in just a moment. Um, let's take a break. When um, Standpoint returns, we'll continue to look at the oil sector and all of the issues um, arising. Stay with us.